supported in managing the meeting by a senior officer. In fact, he's the director in charge of planning. Um, you, you'll see him keep giving me names. He will be collecting the names in order that you indicate you want to speak. So when you want to speak, indicate, and Tony Gillett will put you in order. I also use all the officers by their Christian names. So when you hear a Christian name, you will know it's an officer. Um, you'll hear him talking to me from time to time, so that's the reason why. Um, we'll, we'll have a roll call at the beginning of the meeting so you'll know who the councillors are and who is here. Please mute your microphones when you're not speaking because you do get lots of crackle or you can get lots of crackle. Speakers are the registered to speak. You will have three minutes to, to, to speak and then you'll be asked to sum up. If you don't, and sometimes we get people on that don't sum up, we can press a little button that says mute. <laughs> So please sum up. Um, don't make any responses if you ha happen to like something or dislike something by clapping or booing or hissing or anything. I'm sure you won't. And when it comes to voting, uh, you will hear the committee officer, uh, secretary lady for this evening, um, calling out councillors' names who will be saying whether for or against. That's not for or against the application that's for or against the proposition the proposition might be to refuse but it'll still be you'll be voting for the proposition if you want to or against the proposition to refuse so you just remember that they won't be voting for the application necessarily it'll be for the proposition right a few more things he says first of all now we go to the uh uh, the minutes of the previous meeting. Members, are you happy that the previous meeting were a true and correct record of the meeting? Nobody against? If you're against, raise your hand. Nobody's against. And that we sign them as a true and correct record when available, when, when available to do so. Okay, that will be done. Uh, number two, I don't think that's relevant. Apologies for our, oh, it is uh, relevant. Apologies for absence, please, Marina. You're muted, yeah. Apologies received from Councillor Peter Matten, Chair. Thank you. Otherwise, it's a full house. Yeah, Chairman, um, just to uh, explain, we, we should be doing the roll call now so the uh, members of the public can uh, see who members of the committee are. Okay. One more thing before I go to the roll call is I'm going to ask members tonight to um, be, uh, when they're making their points, if they could make them once rather than several times during the debate, I would be grateful, unless it, it is your ward when sometimes you need to come back. But if you could make the points uh, once rather than several times, it could shorten the meeting, because last time with a similar amount of um, planning applications, it was certainly gone um, 10 15. Right, over to you, Marina, for the roll call. You're muted. Councillors, if you could just confirm if you could see and hear the proceedings, please. Councillor Chandler. Yes, both. Councillor Cribbin. Yes, both. Councillor Dabbs. See and hear, thanks. Councillor Frost? Yeah, good evening. Councillor Harris? Yes to both. Councillor Irving Swift? Yes, please. Councillor James? Councillor James? Yes, I'm here. Seeing here. Councillor Longley? Yes. Councillor Parker? If I am. Councillor Ritchie? Councillor Ritchie? Sorry, I think enough. Yes to both. Yeah. Councillor Robertson. Does that work? Yeah. Councillor Smith. All good. Councillor Wesley. Yeah, good on both. And Councillor Osborne. Obviously, yes, I can hear. <laughs> Thank you, Marina. Next we go to members' interests. First of all, disclosable interests. I see a hand there, Councillor Parker. Yes, just on uh, 
DA 2020-0309. I know the agent because he lives in the same village as myself and we're both members of the Brixworth Neighbourhood Plan Steering Group, but I can confirm I have not talked to him about this application. Thank you. Any more interest? Right, yes, forget, Chair. Can... Yes. yes, Chair. Yes, Chair. Yes. Oh, yes, I can see you. Uh, I know, Miss. Same uh, echo as uh, Councillor Parker. I know Mr. Ozier as well. Okay, that's fair enough. Thank you. No more interest. Don't forget, you can, you may do it at the time when you think you have an interest, it, or rather, if you think you have an interest. Party whipping arrangements. None, Chairman. Thank you, members of the public. That means we don't get get together as groups. Clearly political or otherwise to decide how we're going to vote. We vote on how uh, we see things on the evening. Right, there are applications withdrawn. Right, um, the application in Brixworth tonight, which is 0217, has, uh, has been uh, deferred at the applicant's request. Um, and to put in a, a different application to modify the application. So that won't be heard to, this evening. You will note there are two Daventry applications on. The, the first one, it's not deferred or anything, is 02222, it's in Daventry. The only reason it's on tonight is because it's one of ours, it's one of those that has to come because it's a district council interest um, one. And the other one in Daventry is the one from last week's meeting, last month's meeting, that you remember that we gave delegated powers to the officers as long as there was no, no uh, adverse comment. Well, there wasn't, but a mistake was made and it was put back on the, put back on the agenda again. So it doesn't need to be there. But what we'll do when we come to that is just uh, reaffirm the committee's position on that. The officers, um, there was no um, uh, adverse comment. The officers can still um, just do it. But as, uh, as we're going through a committee, the members might as well say they still agree when we get to it. So bearing all that in mind, I think we can actually start the meeting and go to the uh, very first application, which is in Spratton. Over to you, Joe. Uh, to me, actually, Chairman. Sorry, I beg your pardon. It is indeed. <laughs> anyway, Sorry. good evening, every good evening, everybody. Just trying to share the screen with you now. There we go. Right. This uh, this application is a site on the Bricksworth side of Spratton. For those of you who know it, you go down a hill out of the village, you go past the cemetery, which is now Country Park, uh, sorry, Pocket Park, and it's just past there. And you'll see there, there's a red line inside a blue line, which is obviously the land that's in the same ownership, but not currently in this application. Um, the proposal is to use um, what is effectively a small farm for purposes of uh, children and young adults um, with special educational needs so they can visit um, visit the animals there and uh, have that experience. And as part of the proposal, they want to put in um, hard surface and parking area and turning area uh, to accommodate minibus and uh, private cars because a lot of the uh, people who go there are taking in private cars and uh, I think they have a minibus possibly from Moulton College occasionally turns up. Um, and you'll see there, that's the kind of layout. They've got various small sheds and buildings, polytunnels, various other things we've got some pictures of dotted around for the various animals on the site. Um, this is a view showing the entrance looking back towards uh, Bricksworth in the winter. And uh, this is a view looking back towards Spratton, also taken in the winter from the access. Um, this is the summer view, uh, again looking out towards Bricksworth, and that's looking back towards the village. 
and this is a view of the entrance again that was taken when it was more exposed in the winter and some photos just to show you where the parking area is going to be with the field beyond to the rear just to give you an idea of what the site looks like you can see the various uh, sheds buildings greenhouses um, polytunnels some ducks there geese rabbits so you get the uh, you get the general idea and these are the kind of buildings that are on the site um, I think it's important to say a lot of these buildings are just placed on the ground to be honest and uh, can obviously easily be moved around and wouldn't necessarily constitute development in any sense of the word whether they would be used for agricultural purposes or otherwise because they're just uh, sitting on top of the land and as a composting toilet and a, and a welfare room um, so the application as i say is effectively quasi-agricultural it's a diversification scheme so it's effectively going to end up as a mixed use and uh, they're using the farm animals and they have confirmed to us they are farm animals they're not um, they're not pets so they do go through a, a cycle of being got at market and uh, probably end up back at the market as they go through the site but obviously while they're on the site they do provide a useful facility for those people with special educational needs um, we've looked at it against uh, policies and in our view it does comply with policy and it is supported um, by the MPPF and um, just draw your attention to paragraphs 83 and 84 of the MPPF which talk about rural diversification including the fact it might have to be outside village boundaries um, this obviously isn't that far outside the village boundary um, there are no real concerns from any of the statutory consultees in terms of there's no highway objection, there's no concerns from environmental health officers and um, also uh, the crime prevention officer has got no concerns. Um, we have had similar facilities as well, I just remind members, some members might be familiar, there was one on the other side of Bricksworth down on the Holcott Road and um, we also several years ago had a farm park over at Walgrave um, but I think that's now turned into a, a fishing lake. I mean one of the reasons they say they want to be on this site is, is um, it's quite central to their catchment area and at the moment they say there aren't any of the facilities nearby so I'm not sure if the, the one on the Holcott Road doesn't uh, quite do what it used to do anymore but um, I think overall we think it has minimal visual impact given that the vast majority of the use on the site is agriculture which members will be aware agricultural use of land isn't considered to be development so they don't need plan permission and a lot of the structures on there I'll say are just dropped on the land and they're not development as such so again they don't really need permission so it's just the actual extra use really the comings and goings and obviously the parking facilities for that but that's that's the main difference and mm. In terms of visual impact, I think you can look at the photos that we've shown and certainly in the summer months, it's very well screened and uh, on that basis, Chairman, we're recommending approval. Oh, sorry, I just wanted to add, sorry, just to add, we did get on the late representation, sorry, I, late, <laughs> I just had it to hand. We did get in the late representations a little table showing you the sorts of animals that are on the site and you'll see there that um, most, most of the animals that are there are farm animals. Uh, in terms of their cows and sheep, etc. Again, things that you would anticipate having to be kept in a farmyard location. That's it. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chief. Um, we have three speakers. Uh, the first speaker is Mr. Baker, who's against the application. Mr. Baker, you, if you're there, you have three minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I've submitted this uh, sort of speech. Uh, and I'm speaking on behalf of the residents in Brixworth Road and Old Hall Close, uh, who we've spoken to about that there hasn't been a parish council meeting to discuss this because of lockdown. Uh, so we haven't really been able to discuss it sort of face to face. Um, looking at the uh, notes that the planning officer has provided, in the summary, he says that this is a retrospective application for a change of use from agriculture to a working farm and an education daycare unit. 
It also says this is partly retrospective because the vehicular access and parking haven't been constructed or laid out. Well, I have to say, in spite of the need of planning consent, the applicants have been continuing to build throughout these many months. The road access, along with the majority of all the other sheds, are all practically complete. The officer also says that the principle of development is considered acceptable as it's a proposed agricultural function. But I have to say this operation falls outside the planning definition of agriculture. It is effectively a petting farm with mainly horses, donkeys, ponies, cows and ostrich and other small animals and birds. The development also falls outside the settlement boundary and is within a special landscape area. It is not sustainable since nearly all the feed has to be brought in and the area of land is too small and unfit to support the livestock. The commercial sustainability has not been proven and there's no evidence been provided to show a local or a community need for such an operation. Some of the residents have been very concerned about the highways issues. As you can see, it's a straight road and can be very fast. There is no uh, lay-by there. Um, sometimes vehicles have been pulling out people stopping there, um, it's not good. Uh, the officer also says that there's no significant visual issue identified. Well, the councillors may not have been witnessing the collection of 17 or more sheds and cabins, dismantled buildings, vehicles and other structures which have been growing over the last 12 or more months. We can assure them that this is a visual issue. This is the main approach to the village. It's designated as a special landscape area where development is meant to have no significant or adverse effects on its character, beauty and tranquility. At the moment, it's partly hidden behind a hedge in the summer, but it's been fully exposed to everyone passing by for over six months. The application offers no landscaping or any other significant mitigation. To summarize, this is an application for retrospective development and the applications have continued to build without waiting for consent. It falls outside the adopted Daventry District policy and the policies in the Spratton Neighbourhood Plan, which was subject to a wide local public consultation. Cases like this contribute to the continuing steady creeper development in the special open countryside we've all voted to keep. This council's adopted policy should be protected and enforced. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is uh, Miss White from the Parish Council. Miss Wilkes, sorry. Miss Wilkes, you have three minutes. Yeah, to it's there. Wilkes, thank you. Yeah, um, thank you. As Mr. Baker said, the Parish Council were unable before um, um, submissions were requested to meet because of the um, coronavirus. We have since discussed it on our virtual meetings and our opinion is against it. I would reiterate everything that Mr. Baker has said. Um, I feel very strongly that this is not a working farm. And I think, to be honest, a farmer would be insulted to, for that to be considered a farm. The animals are not used for meat or whatever, milk. Um, there is no such activity. It is purely a petting farm. You only have to look at their Facebook page to see it is for children to play with horses and ponies, which is lovely, but it's not a farm. Um, this has been going on now. I first approached Daventry Council in January last year. They've allowed this to continue, knowing that planning was required. They've allowed people to establish a business which is unauthorised, and that is a dangerous precedent to set. The other thing is, is that the um, planning officer says that um, there is no problem with for local amenity. The increase in animal noise is significant. Um, the donkey braying, and there are three donkeys there, all through the night, no exaggeration. Dog barking incessantly, and I know there have been at least two complaints. Dog running wild from there, in which the local police um, community support officer had to get involved. There is increased traffic. There's deliveries, there's staff. If it's going to be open seven days a week, all day, there's visitors. Again, if you look on their website, it can be used for birthday parties. That's going to be children, a lot of cars. Um, all in all, it's not necessary, and I feel it's wrong. Have I got to finish now? Was that the ding dong? No, it wasn't. It wasn't the um, ding dong. You my, can... final point, my final point would be 
that the land in question is insufficient for the amount of livestock on it. I know alone there are three ponies and three donkeys there. They alone need five acres of grazing. There is no alternative. They can't be stabled at night. There is insufficient land for the welfare of the animals. Um, these factors combined with what Mr Baker said, um, and plus what our local district council has written into the um, council about, is a sufficient reason to reject this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the final speaker is Mr. Mallard, as the applicant. Mr. Millard. Are you there, sir? Uh, Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, you have three minutes, sir, to, uh, to speak. Thank you. Hello, my name is Andy Millard. We run a, a family run business, husband, wife, son, and daughter team whose aim is to manage homegrown care farm, a CIC not-for-profit business alongside our fellow directors to encourage, support and inspire young people to make the most of the opportunities and enjoy life. We are farmers and the site of Spratton is run in the same way as any other farm. Our animals are either bought at market or bred on the farm. We do not take rescue animals in and unfortunately, because of their nervous position or unpredictability. We do bring in our own foods for our animals and they're collected by ourselves using our own, our own vehicles on a monthly basis. We are aiming to grow some, some foodstuffs for ourselves, for our animals as time goes on. Um, but at the moment we're having to buy in. As the planning officer advised, the planning application is required for the other function of the farm, which is a daycare for special needs, children and young adults that either have poor mental health, anxiety or profound learning difficulties, including autism. Clients are referred to us by SEN units such as schools and other specialist organisations. <clears throat> and we cover the whole of Northamptonshire and surrounding areas. We are an inclusive business and we do, we work very hard to help develop each individual's skills, acknowledge and uh, uh, positive attitudes and to prepare them for future <clears throat> with a flexible program to meet their special needs. Our animals help us achieve these objectives and SEN clients stay on the farm for most of the day from half past nine in the morning till four o'clock doing everyday farming tasks such as cleaning, collecting of eggs, animal welfare, grooming, and also uh, more yearly cycles like um, animal births and also uh, shearing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we also have included horticulture within this site so that we can have our own source of hedging plants and um, seedlings to plant out for the, the feeding, the foods that we're looking to grow. <clears throat> we only have a small number of clients each day, and this is what we wish to keep um, because it gives us a more personal approach and a more, uh, more family orientated situation. Our aim is to provide effective solutions for SEN clients, health and social problems, some of which are at risk of exclusion or non-attendance at schools. The experience is providing to uh, be amazingly successful. And for one of the child, one of the children that has been with us this year has gone from a non-attendance back to a full attendance prior to the lockdown. We also run animal courses out of, away from sites um, which um, gives our students entry level to a big tech course at Malcolm College. And we provide work experience and projects for their students on site. The site hasn't been managed for a very long time and getting the farm back into a fit state has been a massive task. It's not been helped by the unprecedented amount of rain during the last winter. Chairman, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Mr. Millard's um, exceeded his three mi minutes significantly now. 
Right, I didn't hear the uh, Marina. Do you have Do you have a buzzer? Yeah, he, he, um, he, right. we've had about I, three and a half minutes now, Chairman. Right. In that, in that case, uh, I'm afraid uh, uh, you, you can have one sentence. Okay. All right. It, a 14 acre site. The animals are cared for. We are inspected by the RSPCA on a regular basis. Okay, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Um, Marina, um, do feel as soon as the three minutes goes, which I can't hear, uh, I, I can't tell from here, could you could you interrupt and say three minutes up, Chairman? All right. Thank you. Right, that concludes the public speakers. There is no local member um, ready to speak. So over to you, Tony, for members that wish to speak. Uh, Councillor Irving Swift is the only one who's indicated they wish to speak. Okay. Good. Councillor Irving evening. Swift. Yes, I am not the local councillor, but I am the county councillor uh, for Brixworth, and uh, Spratton is just so I, it's close to, to my ward. Um, when I look at the planning application, uh, I could see that there was a, a lot of um, uh, things that normally do not require planning application, but somehow I use that road quite often, and um, it I was um, quite concerned of the development of that site. So I'm very glad to see that uh, in front of planning. Um, now, uh, I have three problems with the site. First, um, uh, if it is uh, for SNE's children, uh, being a county councillor, uh, I am worried uh, that you can leave uh, the children all day long without any proper facilities truly because uh, you don't have a, a cafe if they are autistic or something they need maybe a bit more the access is not easy the loo are uh, and the whole site um, looked a bit of a mess if I may say so I'm so sorry Mr. Miller but the whole site looked quite unkept um, so I don't think um, uh, I would have wished uh, because uh, you say that you have uh, some uh, clients that are SNE uh, children. Um, I would have uh, quite appreciated a letter from the county council to make sure that uh, you are accredited to have those children. I do not doubt you, but it will have been helpful for me to understand uh, that. Um, also, uh, I was very alarmed when I received the list of all the animals because um, uh, 14 acres do not seem to, to be uh, big enough to have all your sheep, your uh, uh, cows, no, not cows, um, you have emu, you have alpaca, you have, uh, and if you are just four people on the site, uh, I am concerned at night about the welfare of the animals. I do think when you have so many animals of different nature, it's not like just sheep, but of all different nature, rabbits and, and litter, they don't need the same kind of care. And without anybody on the site, and it's quite, you, you don't live locally, uh, if I understand correctly, looking at your application, uh, you live uh, in the other part of the county. Um, I feel that um, it, it's very odd, but I will, uh, for me, I am not comfortable with that planning application. Um, and, uh, but I do understand the problem of the officer um, uh, that uh, on planning ground, there is not a lot you can do of all the shade, uh, but uh, for me, it's a change of use and I don't like it. So I will wait for my fellow councillor to see uh, how they feel, but I don't feel inclined um, uh, to accept this change of views very easily. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Irving Swift. Over to you, Tony. Anybody indicated? Yeah, we've got five more speakers, Chairman. Um, okay, Councillors, I'll list them now. Councillors James, Robertson, yep. Chandler, Ritchie, and Wesley. Right, you can you can talk quicker than I can write. <laughs> Sorry, James <laughs> Robertson, Chandler. Yeah, James Robertson, Chandler, Richie, Richie and Wesley. Wesley. Wesley, yeah. Okay, Councillor James, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, well, I'm going to support this application. 
And the reason that I'm going to support it is that it is agriculture and some of the animals reared there fall perfectly within the scope of agriculture. The second thing is some of those buildings that are not directly built into the ground or, or, or interfered with it are portable buildings and thus they do not constitute developments as the planning officer said. So we, we've got an agricultural use. The next question is, um, you know, is, is it profitable or not? I was never aware that it, agriculture, in order to farm, one had to farm at a profit. Indeed, I suspect that there are quite a number of people who have got substantial farms who actually make losses. And no one therefore says, well, you're not involved in agriculture anymore. So that really is an irrelevance in this particular case. The next thing is the question of the extent of the land. When I first read this application and I saw that the site constituted 0.4 of a hectare, which is about an acre, I thought, well, my goodness, how can you have all of those animals, the entire list of which we received this evening, uh, or, or rather I saw it uh, this evening before the committee, how could you keep all those animals on site? But of course, during the course of this debate, it emerged that we're talking about additional land as well. I presume that's the land edged in blue and a total of 14 acres. Well, I can categorically say that you can keep all of those animals on 14 acres and you can keep them healthy. And the reason for that is that I think there were uh, two ponies, two horses, three ponies, um, Anyone who looks after horses properly would keep them off the grass anyway uh, this summer. They'd be in buildings, probably being fed a bit of hay or probably let out for a little while, but they don't need too much grass, otherwise you're going to end up with lame horses. So, uh, you know, and the sheep, I think there was a 20-odd a sheep or something. Well, you know, you can keep a you can keep 20-odd sheep comfortably on a, a fraction of 14 acres. So that doesn't apply either. So the next question is, you know, should, is this an application which we could refuse? And the answer is plainly no. There are no grounds on which we could refuse this application. And I'm quite sure that if we did, and it went to appeal, we would be put in our place on this. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Robertson. We can't hear you. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Um, now, the things that concern me are the, the naming. Well, it's been called, not possibly by the applicant, but by other councillors and other speakers, um, a farm. Now, I do take exception to this slightly because really it isn't a farm in the, in the traditional um, wording. Um, it's a bit like calling a wind farm a farm. It isn't a farm, you know, farm wind. Um, it's actually a manufacturing unit in reality. This is more an educational unit. And um, now that's my view. Uh, I was a little concerned on slide two, for instance, where how the application is just for 0.4 of a hectare, but the entire plot or the entire site is 14 acres, um, which is just over five hectares, I believe. Um, that, that would um, also concern me. Why are we only applying for a limited area? It also seems to split the whole area into, into three sections. That also concerns me. I'm not too sure why that is. And I'd like an answer to that if I can have one. Um, otherwise, uh, I've, I've no real objection. It is a scruffy looking unit. There's not much doubt about that. But that's a matter of housekeeping and management. And, you know, providing we uh, monitor that situation, um, I, I cannot see any real uh, reason Oh, no planning reason anyway to object to this to this unit, but I am prepared to listen to other councillors. Okay, thank you, Councillor Robertson. Councillor Chandler. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just to elaborate slightly on Councillor James' point about uh, profitability, I'm sure members will be aware, because I've told them before, that 25% of farmers actually live below the poverty line at the moment. Uh, so it's quite clear that profitability is not a necessary characteristic of agriculture. There is, as we've heard, no planning reason why this should not go ahead. 
it is clearly agriculture. Uh, whether you call it a farm or not depends on your point of view. There's no uh, formal definition. Um, and so I see no reason to withhold the consent for this uh, proposal, Chairman, and I'm quite happy to propose that we uh, go with officers' advice and, and recommend approval. Thank you, Councillor Chandler. Do you have a seconder? I'll second it, Chairman. Put your hand up if you've got if you've got a seconder. Chairman, Councillor James has seconded. It's who seconded it? Sorry. Uh, Councillor James, Chairman. It's all right. I, my internet went a, a bit poor then. Councillor James. So we had a seconder that. We have a seconder. Uh, you don't wish to say anything else at the moment, Councillor James, do you? No, I assume you don't, because you've just spoken. <laughs> OK, and we'll go on to Councillor Ritchie then. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I can be very brief, because I most things I would have said have been said by Councillors Chandler and, 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 and Councillor James. Um, two issues that have been raised um, by Councillor Irving Swift um, the facilities for SEN children and um, whether, whether the, the facilities are suitable for, uh, whether there should be concerns over animal welfare. Well, I haven't heard anything that suggests that we need be concerned about either, but I'm grateful if anybody could confirm that, you know, even if there were, these are not planning issues, they are issues that would come up. Um, in you know, in a completely different, in a completely different sort of discussion. Um, but otherwise, I'm very happy to, you know, to be supporting this. Thank you, Councillor um, <coughs> Richie. Councillor Wesley. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a little bit of clarification, really. Um, I'm all for um, diversification of, of agricultural agricultural units and. Um, there's a few semantics around this, but at the end of the day, it is, a, it is an agricultural unit. Um, it's just that when we've previously discussed um, agricultural applications for various things, we've had, um, we have had farming experts talking about viability, sustainability, and, um, and the use of the land. You know, this, is, this is a change of use, ostensibly from agriculture, diversifying into other areas. And um, would, is is there no is there no requirement of uh, of measure of viability to make sure that that is the case? Um, I just want to satisfy myself on that. Really, that's all. Okay, I'm sure Keith Thursfield can answer that. Keith, do you want to answer that question? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I'll start with that one first because there was an earlier question as well that you wanted an answer on. Um, right. No, there isn't in this particular instance. Obviously, the normal viability test we apply is where somebody wants an agricultural dwelling or something similar. So we obviously uh, we obviously get it vetted in terms of the viability of the business to see whether the, the need for the dwelling is going to be long term. But in this case, I think I think it's um, effectively a little, every little helps in terms of its diversification. And obviously, if they do make some money out of it, that's all well and good. But there's no requirement for it to make a profit or, or be a viable business. Um, it's, something, it's something that they obviously they want to do and they can accommodate, but we don't require them to show a profit on this one. Um, and the other point I was asked about was why, why have we got like the red bit in the middle of the blue bit, which is a larger bit? The simple answer to that is the, uh, the larger blue bit is agricultural land anyway. So obviously they don't need planning permission to use agricultural land for agricultural purposes. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Keith. Uh, before I go to the vote, Tony, are there any more speakers? No more indicated, Chairman. Okay. We have a proposal that the application be approved, which has been seconded. All those in favour, and we're going over to um, our... Trustee Secretary to have a roll call. So if you're in favour, you, you say you're, in, you're, you're for it, you're for the application being approved. And if you're against it, you're against the application being approved. I hope that's clear. Over to you, Marina. 
Okay, councillors. Councillor Chandler. Four. Councillor Cribbin. Four. Councillor Dabbs. Against. Councillor Frost. Four. Councillor Harris. Four. Councillor Irving Swift. Against. Councillor James. Councillor Longley. Four. Councillor Parker. Four. Councillor Ritchie. Four. Councillor Robertson. Four. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Wesley. Four. That's 11 in favour and two against, Chairman, so it's carried. Thank you. The application is approved. <clears throat> right, the next application is the first one of the two in Daventry, which I talked about. It's only on the agenda because uh, we have an interest as a council in the application 022. Oh, dear. Can you still hear me? Yes, I hope so. Over to you, Chung. There we go, Chairman. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, this application is actually sited within the High Street in Daventry and proposes to change and use the ground floor, which is currently an A1 retail unit, to an A3 restaurant to also include a new shop front as well. And you'll see from the report that there are no objections to the application from either the Town Council or any neighbouring properties. Um, and you'll also see from the late representations that the conservation officer did um, have some negotiations regarding the flu and those negotiations have resulted in amended plans and then the plans before members tonight. Um, in, light of all, in light of the fact that there are no objections to the application, uh, we are recommending the application be approved. And as you said, Chairman, it is only on the agenda because we are, have, DDC have an interest in the application. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you. Right, bearing that in mind, uh, local members, wh what is it? Abbey North, that one? Sorry, Chairman, it's actually Abbey South. It's Abbey South. Do Abbey South wish to comment on that? Councillor Wesley, is it? Um, yes, please. I'll raise my hand. Yes, OK. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, um, I support this application. Got no. Re I can't see any reason to uh, say no to it, so uh, I... Um, I'll recommend approval and say that we should um, go with offers of advice on this. I hope I've got a seconder somewhere. Thank you. I'm sure you'll find one. Can anybody second that application? I can see a hand right below you, which is Councillor Irving Swift, I think. Um, would you like to say anything, Councillor Irving Swift, or not? No, thank you. I uh, would like to second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if yeah, there's I mean, nobody you've, else, you've sorry, got one of the speaker. Uh, Councillor Dabbs. Yes, sorry, Councillor Dabbs. Yeah, just a brief one. Um, I, I, I don't oppose this. Uh, I think I think I'm in favour. But the issue I have is uh, I take issue with the design and access statement, which I, I read um, for anybody that wants the specifics. It was paragraph 1.2. Um, seen this before with the takeaways and so on, and uh, when we had one further down the road, that there seemed to be massive inaccuracies uh, in considering. Uh, what already exists. Now, I know that competition is not relevant for planning, but it, it just annoys me that we haven't got uh, sensible statements and councillors who are not familiar with Daventry High Street, as I wouldn't be with high streets in some far-flung village, um, might get uh, misled. Um, there are several restaurants nearby. Um, there is, I assume that this is going to be a Turkish restaurant, which I don't have an issue with. We do have a Turkish uh, restaurant just further up the road, just outside the, the Burton Memorial. And we do have the kebab shop at the entrance to Bowen Square. Um, so that was not quite an accurate statement in uh, the statement. But there we go. And as I say, I don't oppose. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. I'm, sh I'm sure the officers heard what you said anyway. Right. If nobody else wishes to speak, um, I don't believe they do because Tony isn't uh, indicating. Uh, we have a proposal that the application be approved and it's been seconded. All those in favour, could they tell uh, wonderful Marina in a few seconds? Marina, roll call. Councillor Chandler. Four. Councillor Cribbin. 
Four. Councillor Dabbs. Four. Councillor Frost. Four. Councillor Harris. Four. Councillor <coughs> Irving Swift. Four. Councillor James. Four. Councillor Longley. Four. Councillor Parker. Four. Councillor Ritchie. Four. Councillor Robertson. Four. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Wesley. Four. Carried unanimously, Chair. Thank you. The application is approved. The next two applications are in Crick. They're both the same ap application, but one is the listed building version. Um, I aim to take the discussion of both applications together. So when the speakers uh, speak on it, um, that they will be speaking on both the listed building ap application and the ordinary application. And as is normal practice, I will need two proposals near the end, for e uh, one for each application. So over to you again, Chan. Chung, you're on mute. Ah, that's better. Um, the application relates to a Grade 2 listed building, which is in the high streets of Crick. Um, you'll see it holds quite a central location to, in, in the village itself. And the application before members tonight for consideration is actually a single storey extension to the rear of the property. Your members will note from the report that in 2019, um, uh, consent was granted for an extension and that particular extension measured 5.8 metres by 5.2 metres. The size and scale of that extension was subject to considerable negotiations between officers and the applicant at the time. The current application before members tonight seeks consent for an ex rear extension again, but this time it would be, be 9.5 metres, considerably greater than the previously consented. And in fact, 70, you'd now take up 75% of the rear elevation. It's important that when it comes to any listed building that any extensions are subservient in the scale and size. And in this particular case, officers feel that the size and scale would be harmful to both the historic and the architectural significance of this particular building. And where there is harm identified, that harm should be weighed against the public benefits. In this case, officers do not feel that there is sufficient public benefits that would be outweighed the harm to the building. And as such, officers are recommending the application be refused. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chung. Um, we have two speakers on this application. First of all, Ms. Jameson from the Parish Council. Ms. Jameson, you have three minutes. Can you hear us? Unmute. Right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you can't, hear me? Can't see you, but we can hear you. All right. Sorry. OK, I'm sorry. Right. Um, good evening, everybody. I'm Jill Jameson and I'm from Crick Parish Council. Uh, at its meeting on the 15th of June, Crick Parish Council voted unanimously to support both of these applications for the following reasons. Last year, a previous planning application at this property, also supported by the Parish Council, was approved. And this new proposal is only an extra 2.8 meter in width across the rear of the property. Um, there is a discrepancy in the figures quoted, but this will be explained by the architect. There is no increase in depth. Low thatch sits on a large quarter of an acre plot. The extension will not be cramped, nor will it be visible from the road. Therefore, it will not affect the street scene, neither is it visible by any neighbours, and so will not affect their amenity. This revised proposal aims to improve the layout and flow through the house by incorporating the French doors within the extension. This will enable it to function more efficiently as a family home and will future-proof it by providing downstairs bathroom facilities. The proposed design blends well with the existing property by being a modern addition, but lightweight and open in design, which allows the facade of the existing building to be seen and appreciated. The scheme proposes to reuse existing materials where possible and will be an energy efficient design. The main body of the original house will remain untouched. 
it will be clearly visible through the large clear glass panels. It's a modern lightweight design which does not compromise the main building. Policy ENV 10 of the part two local plan seeks to achieve high quality innovative design and paragraph 127 section A of the national planning policy framework states that planning decisions should be sympathetic to local character and history while not preventing appropriate innovation or change. The key word in both planning documents is innovation. This proposal is not aiming to emulate a historic building. It is a simple inoffensive addition. Mention will also be made of a similar extension submitted by the same architect and approved in West Haddon. It is evident that no two listed buildings or proposals are the same, but when owners of listed builders are wanting to make changes to their properties, they will look for schemes which have been approved to offer them some guidance. The similarity with this scheme is considerable and we would therefore look for a degree of consistency in decision making. In conclusion, we can look at various planning policies to argue for or against a planning proposal on a listed building. But in the final analysis, what constitutes good or innovative design is a matter of opinion. We would therefore confirm our support for these applications and ask that you give your approval. Thank you very much indeed. And I'm sorry I couldn't get the picture on. Thank you. Thank and the you. second speaker is Mr. Willoughby, who's the agent. Over to you, Mr. Willoughby. Hello, councillors and members of the planning committee. Uh, my client approached me because he felt that the previous approved scheme didn't address the main circulation issues within the building. He felt that although he had designed most of it himself, that the aesthetic could also be much improved. He'd seen the scheme that we previously mentioned in West Haddon, uh, that we had approved for a modern rear extension that covered, that's covered the entire rear elevation. He was a little confused as to why he had been limited to 40%. Um, I've taken note of what I said about uh, each case on its own merits, but we believe the properties are so similar in style and layout that this should be say, taken into consideration. Uh, the officer states that the architectural details and essence of the character and the cottage have not been reflected in the extension and as such it is a stark uh, contrast. The combination of flat angular roof, large square windows and block and stonework make the extension appear very squat and heavy. We feel that this contemporary design is actually well suited. It reads as a piece of architecture of the time rather than a pastiche of a former style. The stone and metal references elements of the main building but in the contemporary representation and it looks to create a lightweight structure that floats above large fans of glass and make the extension, extension appear light and allows other parts of the dwelling to be clearly legible from both external and internal views. In fact, it was the conservation officer who first recommended that a lightweight modern extension would be the best route forward. The planning officer also reports that the extension is cramped and contrived from the development owing to the extension being crammed in between the existing large detached garage and the rear garden. The extension is actually 10.2 metres away from this garage and the garden is nearly a quarter of an acre, which is pretty vast. Uh, so there remains plenty of space around the dwelling. There also appears the discrepancy in the ratio um, because of a slight dog leg in the boundary line where we've got it as 9.5 metres, which is 72% of the main dwelling. But when you view it in on plan, it's only 65%. Uh, the planning officer has also noted the National Design Guide 2019 quoted uh, this guidance requiring analysis of the building layout, form and scale. Um, we feel that this proposal's main objective was to look to enhance the layout of the property improved day-to-day -day functionality. Uh, this seems to have been not considered as there seems to be a fixation on not going over the footprint that was previously approved. Uh, we feel that the design is still subservient um, and takes great consideration of the main listed elements. Um, the proposal looks to create the central reception room, uh, which doesn't disrupt the building fabric and allows the space to, as a circulation area rather than the current living spaces which act as thoroughfares. Um, the property required a design of architectural quality that enhances the main dwelling and- Three allows... minutes, Chairman. Oh, I'll, I'll do a- One more sentence, sir. Okay, uh, we, uh, we believe the, the design is actually lightweight, minimal, uh, is subservient and makes a positive contribution. Um, and for this reason, we, 
uh, recommend that it's actually the approval is granted. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Right, we have two local members. Um, one is on the committee and one has requested to speak. Right, Councillor Robertson, you have first choice. Did you want to go first or do you want to get, let ladies go first? I'll let Councillor Lomax go first, if you'd like to. Councillor Lomax, it's ladies first. Chivalry night. <laughs> Over to you. Thank you very much, Chairman. I'll, um, committee, I'm always keen to protect our heritage and the sense of place in our district. But I, I would remind the committee uh, that Crick, under the Parish Council leadership, has worked over the years to produce a village design statement and a neighbourhood plan, and it has fully supported the recently approved conservation area review. The committee is familiar with the village's opposition to what the community has regarded as inappropriate development in the past. And it's in that context that I point out that there is no village opposition to this application. The parish council has no opposition. On the contrary, it is supportive. Neighbours do not object. The extension cannot be seen from the road or by surrounding houses, so it cannot be said to detract from the street scene. It has, in fact, with its contemporary and innovative design, rather more to recommend it than the brick-built modern garage, which is intrusive in the, in the street scene. And yet it seems from the officer's report that the proximity of the extension to the garage is unacceptable. The design of the extension is very modern. The extensive glazing does, however, allow the rear of the house still to be seen and the lower height allows the bathroom window to be fully visible. The green roof ties the extension visually to the garden. In all, it cannot be said to affect the street scene, nor to remove anything from the heritage asset, nor to impact adversely on the surrounding environment, nor distort the village layout. All buildings change over time. This contemporary addition seems well thought out, and I ask the committee to approve the application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lomax. Uh, Councillor Robertson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, you know, for once, I totally agree with everything Councillor Lomax has said. Um, I do think <laughs> that it's a serious matter to uh, um, go against the advice of our officers. Um, but on this occasion, there is so much support for this um, application that I think we're going to have to. The, the extension cannot be seen by anybody else other than the occupants. Um, the, the extension is a lightweight appearance and does not detract from the, um, uh, from, from the uh, amenity of the listed building in any way, as far as I can see. Now, um, OK, we, we have an argument here about um, public, um, um, I forget what it's called now, but there's, there's, a, there's an argument in listed buildings that says it's supposed to be... Um, um, a public benefit, which of course isn't really any of any public benefit, but there again, it is in a completely private area. So, um, on that basis, Chairman, I believe that we must go against officers' advice just on this occasion and uh, a grant planning permission for it. And I would therefore like to propose that we do exactly that. And your planning reason for it, Councillor? So, our planning reason is is simply that it is. That it does not, um, it does, does not cause uh, significant harm to a listed building. Thank you. Right. Do you have a seconder? I can see a hand, and the first hand I can see is Councillor Longley. Uh, you, you wish to second, Councillor Longley. Do you wish to speak? I do. I do. Yes, I do. Um, I, as you're probably well aware, um, Chairman, I'm the... Um, County Councillor that includes Crick and Braunston, and I um, I know the um, the, the committee, uh, the Parish Council at Crick very well, and um, it's one of the most effective and um, and uh, uh, intelligent um, uh, Parish Councils that I deal with, and uh, if I see them saying that uh, they're wholly in support of it, then I am immediately um, drawn to that, and I see no. Nobody else in the village, the whole village supports it. Who, who are we to 
to, to, to go differently. Uh, my personal view is the design actually helps the, build, the, the building. So um, I'm very, very pleased to, um, to second that proposal. Thank you, Councillor Longley. Um, Tony, speakers. Uh, yes, uh, Chairman, we've got four members of the committee and the officer wants to come back. So I, d I don't know how, we, how you'd like I'll, to do I'll that. I'll let the four members of the... Uh, well, the officer wishes to come up. Let the officer come back first. Then the four, the four members of the committee are... Uh, Councillor James, Councillor yep. Harris, yep. Councillor Chandler... Yeah. Councillor Dabbs. Okay. And right. Jung, you wish to come back. Over to you. Thank you, Chairman. I just need to remind office uh, members that even when there is not significant harm and even when there's less substantial harm as identified, where even when there's any harm that has to be weighed against the public benefits. Um, so I think maybe Councillor Robertson might want to reword or reconsider the wording of his proposition um, because as I said where there is any harm whether it be significant or not significant um, it, it, whether it be less than substantial if there's any harm identified at all that has to be weighed against public benefits so I think Councillor Robertson what he's really saying I think what he said in the first instance was that it does not detract at all from the listed building and as such, in his opinion, there was no harm rather than not, well, not rather than less than substantial harm. Is that correct, Councillor Robertson? Yes, it is. Thank you, Chung. Uh, basically, there, I, I feel that uh, no harm is being done to the listed building yeah. by this application. Okay, that's fine. And you're happy seconding those words, ca Councillor? Yeah, yes, I am, Chair. Okay, so the proposition still stands then. Right, over to Councillor James. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I know that each application has to be taken on its merits, but when I read the report on this, I immediately thought of the one at West Haven, which has a, a certain similarity, although uh, the extensions there, I think, were a little bit bigger than this one here. So I, I think that there does have to be some consistency in the way we approach these things. But I'll leave that to one side and concentrate on this on its merits. I myself don't consider that this does any harm at all uh, to this property uh, because whilst, uh, as it says or said here tonight, the extension stretches now about three quarters of the way across the back or up to three quarters, nevertheless, its height and its massing in relation to the massing of the main building is considerably less uh, so uh, and fits in quite nicely. And the design of it, particularly with the uh, glass uh, windows, doors, whatever they are, uh, that does allow for not only um, to be able to see through it, to see the building, but of course now that that window is exposed, uh, the window is open uh, as well uh, to be seen at the back there. So I, I don't consider it does any harm at all. And it is at the rear of the property, which means that uh, people out in the... In the um, in the road itself, don't even know it's there. And, you know, whilst everybody's got their own individual ideas on taste, if you don't want to come around the back and agree with it, you're free to stay out there on the road. It's as simple as that. So I quite agree with this, that we should go against officers' advice on this one and um, pass the application. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Harris. I'll be brief, uh, Chair, uh, just to echo Councillor James's points. Um, I think this is a rather empathetic design, actually, of uh, new blending with old. The glass itself, as everyone has described, uh, ensures that you have an excellent view of the Grade 2 listed house. Um, it seems to have no impact and no interference on any neighbours in any quarter. It seems to be a private area. Um, so I would uh, completely agree and endorse that we go against office advice on this one. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Chancellor. Thank you, Chair. Um, as Heritage Champion, I must point out that uh, adding any form of extension to a listed building does create harm, less than substantial. There is no public benefit against which to weigh that harm. The fact that you can't see it uh, has no meaning at all in terms of what the uh, rules say about 
uh, modifying listed buildings. So I can't support this application, Jim. Thank you. Councillor Dabbs. Thank you, Chair. Well, I, I just echo everything that uh, Councillor Chandler has just said. I, I was waiting for somebody to come out with some good sense. I, th I think a certain amount of this is, is entirely down to subjectivity rather than objectivity. Is it too big? Is, does it look good? Does it not look good? Um, I agree with the officers. I agree with uh, Councillor Chandler. Um, it's not appropriate uh, extension and we should go with officers' advice and refuse it. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you. Tony, any more speakers? Uh, no more speakers indicated, Chairman. OK. Well, in that case, we shall go to the vote. We have a proposition that the application be approved, um, which has been seconded. So over to you, Marina, for the roll call. So if you're voting for, you're voting to approve the application. Councillor Chandler. Against. Councillor Cribbin. Against. Councillor Dabbs. Against. Councillor Frost. Abstain. Councillor Harris. For. Councillor Irving Swift. Against. Councillor James. For. Councillor Longley. For. Longley. Councillor Longley. I said four. 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 Councillor Parker. Same one connections unstable. Councillor Parker. Parker. Oh dear, where is he? Seems to have lost him. He's on mute. Oh. Oh. Ah. Councillor Ritchie. Stin. Councillor Robertson. Four. Councillor Smith. Against. Councillor Wesley. Four. Six five. Six five to abstentions. Six in favour, five against, and two abstentions, Chair. The um the proposition wins then, so the application is approved. Okay. That's correct, isn't it, Marina? I hope I've got it correct anyway. Yes, Chairman, right. that's correct. The application is approved. Right, the next application is in Long Buckley and it's double zero. Chairman. Chairman, sorry. Oh, sorry no, no, got... no, no, no. I've got two. Yes, you're dead right. Uh, we were just dealing with the very first one there. Now I need the sec uh, proposition for the second one. So does the same person want to do the same proposition or not? Yes, Chair. Okay. So, Councillor Robertson, again, what, what reason? Same reason, presumably. Indeed. Um, yeah, same, same for the second, dear Chair. Okay. Does anybody else wish to speak separately on it? I think you, I, I did say we'd speak on both of them. Nobody so, indicated, Chairman. Okay. Uh, again, a roll call on the second application. So, you're, you're voting to uh, approve the second application as well. Second that page. Well, I've got to get the right page again now. Is that the listed one? Okay, so Marina, over to you. So if you're voting for it, you're voting to approve it again. Councillor Chandler. Against. Councillor Cribbin. Against. Councillor Dabbs. Against. Councillor Frost. Abstain. Councillor Harris. All. Councillor Irving Swift. Against. Councillor James. Uh. Councillor Longley. Or. Councillor Parker. Or. Councillor Ritchie. Abstain. Councillor Robertson. Or. Councillor Smith. Against. Councillor Wesley. Or. Same result, Chairman. Six four, five against, two abstentions. Again, that application is approved as well. So both applications are approved. 
now we're over to the um, Lombok view, and I don't know why I'm trying to get my dinner early tonight. Chairman, but, uh, Chairman I've got an yes. officer um, indicating they want to speak. Yes, which one? Chung, Chairman. Chung, over to you. I just wanted to refer to conditions, Chairman. Oh, right. Uh, what, what would be the normal conditions on, the, on there, Chung? Would I, would I would suggest conditions relating to the materials and joinery be submitted. Um, there might be further conditions relating to the list of building application um, in terms of the details and how it adjoined the act fixer to the actual list of building itself. Um, would members be happy to include all those and delegate further to officers as necessary? Um. Right, members. Normally, we delegate things like that to officers. Officers know which, what, what, what kind of things they've got to submit and everything. Are you happy with that? Agreed. Agreed. Nobody's against that. No. Okay, Chung. So normal, what we would expect to come from officers for that. Okay. Are you happy with with that, Chung? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It's delegated to you. Right now we're in Long Upby. Over to you, Chung. Right. Thank you, Chairman. If we look at the application site, you'll see that um, it lies within the confines of the village. Um, just bear me a moment, please. What's happened? Uh, just... Oh, you can't get the... Side up, Joe. Um, yeah, just bear with me, ma'am. I can't seem to sh share my screen for some reason. Can you see the screen at all? No. No, no. no is the short, short answer. Okay, just bear with me a moment. Aha, uh -huh. ah. here we go. Yes, we right. can see you now. You'll see from the site location plan, the site does lie within um, the centre of Long Buckby and being a primary service village, development plan does encourage development within the confines. Um, as such, the principle of development is accepted in this particular area. You'll see from the report that the application was previously refused. And it was felt that in the absence of any details regarding its impact on the TPO tree and also protected species survey, that there was sufficient information to demonstrate that the proposal in terms of environmental impacts would be would be would lead to improvements um, in this particular ca case uh, the new current application before members tonight does seek approval for the access but also for the siting of the dwellings as well and having regard to the tree survey and also the current plan, which demonstrates that the, all the parts of the development are now outside the root protection area and having received uh, protective species survey to demonstrate that there'll be no harm or to the, any protected species together with um, comments from the county highway officer, which raised no objections. Officers now feel there are no technical impediments to the application and are recommending the application be approved. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chung. We have a speaker, Mr. Ozia, who's the agent. Over to you, Mr. Ozia. You, Ozia, you have three minutes. Can you hear us, sir? I can hear some crackling, but I can't hear Mr. Ozia. He's muted. I can't even see a picture of him. Can um, you hear um, me now? Yeah. Uh, yes, go ahead. Can, okay, thank you. I, it's just I couldn't see my own picture on the, just the picture. No, you won't. No, won't. Okay. Well, thank you, Chair. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I just wish to emphasise a few points. And of course, I know they've already been referred to both by the officer just now and of course in the report. But clearly I support the officer's recommendation to approve the proposal. As referred, following on from the previous decision, we have addressed the ecology issues and completed surveys in terms of the great crested newts. In respect of the protected tree, 
which is in the adjacent garden to the rear of our site, we have repositioned one of the proposed bungalows and garage to outside of the protection zone. This ensures that no harm will be caused to the tree and also there is a proposed condition which doubly ensures that that is the case. In making the layout part of this application and not uh, as a reserve matter, the proposal for small two bed bungalows is ensured. From the responses we have received and shared with your officers, there is clearly a local need for these properties. The location is sustainable, close to the centre of the village and its facilities, and therefore is ideal for this type of site. I trust you can support your officers' recommendation and approve the application. In my view, it would be a consistent approach in terms of other decisions, decisions that you've made in the village. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Ozier. Um, right, local, local members. Um, can you take the pictures away so we can see people? Um, whoever's got the picture on the screen. Ah, lovely. Right, um, I am one of the local members, so I'm speaking now as a local, doing my local member bit. Um, I don't support the recommendation. Um, I just have listened to the um, applicant, uh, the agent, say that they've addressed the ecology reasons. Completely agree with him, he has, or they have. I hear that they've addressed the tree problems completely agree with them. They have. What they haven't addressed is there are four reasons that this was refused three months ago. Reason one, if, if members turn to page 78 of their papers and the very last paragraph gives you reason one, then you go on to page 79. So reason one, I'm not going to read it all out because it's ridiculous when you've got it in front of you, but basically it's contrary to policy R1. And also uh, number two, again, I don't wish to read that out, but I'm sure members can, can, can read as well. Um, what the applicant has done, a satisfied number three, satisfied number four reason for refusal, but has not and cannot satisfy number one and number two. So why can't they do that? As you're aware, um, <coughs> that what R1 means, um, again, I shall ask you to look at page 80, 81 of the report and halfway down where it's got one, two, three, four, but just before that, there is a, a paragraph that says, however, the latter part of the policy also advises that once the housing requirement for rural areas, areas have been met, then further housing development will only be permitted when it can be demonstrated that it satisfies one of those. Well, it clearly doesn't satisfy absolutely any of those. This particular house, which is a substantial house on a substantial plot, and I think I can say that it's one of only two houses left in the village on such a large plot and such an old house. Um, it was a doctor's surgery when I was a little boy. I believe it had a new roof on there four years ago. Um, it is an absolutely beautiful place with a horse chestnut tree, a pond and, and lovely gardens. Now R1 says we, we were all sold in the villages that once the five year land supply was, was met and we've got a six year land supply that our villages would be safe and wouldn't get any more development. Now Longbutby's had nearly 300 and uh, enough is enough. It, this application does not satisfy R1. And if, it's, uh, and if the officers if the officers were against it three months ago, nothing's changed. And it doesn't satisfy the second reason for refusal as, uh, as well that they use. But it does the other two, I accept. 
So I'm going to propose that the application be refused um, for the given two reasons as per previous. Um, and that's it. I go back to the chairman's job now. Right, do I have a seconder? Um, Councillor Irving Swift, do you wish to second? Thank you. Do you wish to speak? Um, you'll have no, to you, say, you said it all, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. The other local member is. <coughs> so I've forgotten my local member now. Uh, that's very, very good. Yes. Yes. I can see you, Malcolm. Councillor Longley. Thanks. Thanks, Chairman. Um, well, thank you, um, Chair. I mean, you, you've said most of the things that um, could be said about that. Um, um, but uh, in, in it, so I'm not going to repeat them. Um, but I would add that there are two issues that came to my mind. I know the site very well. Um, and I'm just surprised at the, what I think is a pretty cramped site. Um, I, I think that the, the, the use of, um, I say, putting five on there, um, and, and, um, but not putting another um, affordable house on there out of that five is, is a bit, bit cheeky to say the least, because what it is, it, it, it said, well, we've not one down, therefore we haven't actually put five up, we put four. Now, I don't, I, I don't like that approach and, and I think it's cramped anyway. So um, I think the, the, the site's so cramped. The other thing is I know the road very well and that's, um, that, that's, that's not an easy road to get out on at, uh, at peak time. So, um, so given your um, uh, assessment of it, Chair, yeah, and, and, um, and, uh, and the, and the thing about the rural villages, then I'm, I will be I will be going against officers' advice on this occasion. Thank you, Tony. Speakers, please. Uh, Councillor Ritchie, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Ritchie. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I thought that what you had to say was very persuasive, and I totally agree with you. I would add that I think this a committee. We need a procedure when you as chair have got something significant to say that you do not need on an item to say that from the chair, as I feel that if I had taken a different view, I would feel that somehow that the, the discussion had been preempted. But that is a procedural matter. In terms of what you had to say, um, I, I would agree. Can I thank you for that, Councillor Ritchie? Um, all I can say is, in response to what you've just said, it's the way it's been done for 30 years. Um, but it, you're dead right, it's a procedural matter. Um, any more speakers, Tony? Uh, yes, Councillor James. Councillor James. You used to live opposite this site, Councillor well, James. Yeah, well, when I was a toddler and I lived with my grand, I did live opposite. In fact, you I did. used to play in the front garden there. Um, you know, I have my house next door to it. So, well, I say I know it well. I knew it well at one time. Um, but I don't have any emotional attachment to it. Uh, I know the position in Long Buckby, although there are bungalows there, there are very few of them. And in fact, my mother lived at the Haven in Skinyard Lane, uh, and she was lucky to have a bungalow there. Uh, they're so few and, and far between. Uh, the way I'm looking at this is that two or three of the conditions have been satisfied that were of concern the time before. And I recognise that this policy R1, uh, strictly speaking, it doesn't comply with that. But I think the shortage of accommodation in a position that is so near to the centre of Long Buckley, and which is ideally suited to those of a senior age, like myself, uh, it is so suitable, uh, near to the library, near to the shops and so on, that it would be a great pity to reject its demolition and redevelopment for these five bungalows, because they would be in very great demand. And I'm quite sure, judging by the number of times people raise this issue, indeed at planning committees, this shortage of bungalows has got to be rectified. So I think that this is one occasion. Here we have a site that's within the confines of the village. It's suitable and relatively easy uh, to redevelopment. It would have a demand for the finished product, which is much needed. You know, I would be, I would be lying if I said that, um, you know, the application should be rejected. 
and, and and with it, you know, any sentimental attachment I've got, and I've been thinking about it all the time. Uh, the speakers have been talking, thinking about what I did and what I didn't do. All of that means nothing compared with the justice of passing this application. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. I'll put you right on a couple of things, though. Um, I ran over last night the number of bungalows there are in the village, and there's about 100. And that is a lot of bungalows in the village. And another thing I would say that we don't determine a, a, a village's need um, by what a developer says or what a councillor says. We determine a, villi a village's need by a housing needs survey. Uh, and there's no current housing needs survey for this village. Any more speakers, Johnny? I can't hear you. Yeah, Councillor Wesley, Chairman. Sorry, Councillor Wesley. Yep. Yeah, Councillor. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I thought your argument was, was quite persuasive. Um, I was of a mind to go with officers on this. And but I have to say, um, I'm with uh, I'm with Councillor James on this one. Um, yeah, there's no uh, there's no housing needs survey, but of course, um, you know we weren't we were we were happy to uh, we were happy to approve some houses last time. Um, without that, I believe, um, you know, bungalows. It is important that we recognise that we recognise that. And you may have a hundred bungalows in the village, but um, I would imagine these will be sought after as well. I know that's a subjective a subjective view. Um, but I really do think um, you're missing an opportunity here not to put these bungalows up, and uh, and um, and I, I'm afraid I can't go with you on this one, Chair. Thank you. That that's fine. I must say that uh, we've got two bungalows at the moment being converted into houses. Um, one's coming through on a planning application, which will be heard very shortly, if not delegated to officers, and one being converted already. At the top of Lombard, you'll see it every time you drive in. Any more speakers, Tony? Uh, no more indicated, Chairman. Okay, we have a proposition that the application be um, uh, rejected, um, uh, which has been seconded. All those in favour, over to you, Marina, uh, of the proposition of the application being rejected for the given reasons. Councillor Chandler. Against. Councillor Cribbin. Against. Councillor Dabbs. Against. Councillor Frost. Against. Councillor Harris. For. Councillor Irving Swift. For. Councillor James. Councillor James. Councillor James, you're on mute. Against. James. The application being rejected. Okay. Councillor Longley. For. Councillor Parker. Against. Councillor Ritchie. For. Councillor Robertson. 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 For. Said for. For. Okay. Councillor Smith. For. Councillor Wesley. Against. And you've got my vote as well this time. <laughs> Councillor Osborne. <laughs> yeah. Have you got seven? Yeah. Chair, it's a tie. Seven in favour, seven against. Oh. Blow me. <laughs> Well, it's very rare, as, as members know, that I have a vote on planning committee. I don't like the casting vote at all. I, I like other members to do it. But on this occasion, I shall vote um, the way I voted in the first one. So the application is refused. Okay, we move on. We will do when I get the pieces of paper correct anyway. Right, the next application, this is just to, to make sure that you're happy with the position. This is the Daventry one that last time that you delegated to officers, 
by mistake it's been put on the agenda again so the officers can still delegate it if you're happy with that but you've got a choice if nobody sticks their hand up the assumption is you're still happy for for the committee to approve it right nobody has put their hand up at all so i'm taking the position that the committee still approves it even though it has been delegated to officers so you've got um a delegated to officers and an approval by the committee as well john thank you chairman so we go thank over to the we go over to the last one now, which is again is in Long Rugby and is in double. Well, over to you, Chum. Thank you, Chairman. Um, me a moment. Again, the application relates to a property which is in the confines of Long Rugby. And this property is actually a two story dwelling, which is of a sort of 1980s construction and is located at the very bottom of a cul de sac. You'll see from some of the photographs when I get there that work is actually currently underway already. Um, and that's because there was a previous consent granted for a very similar um, extension um, very recently. If I can show you the previous approval. So the previous approval had a single story rear extension and also a two story side extension as well. And the current proposal seeks to raise the roof of the two story element in order to allow space to be created within the roof and add three adornments to the side elevation as well. If we look at the site location, again, these windows were located on the south elevation and as such, the proposed dormers would not overlook any, overlook any neighbouring properties. In order to accommodate that, those new, that new accommodation, um, the roof in, in terms of the eaves and the ridge will both have to be raised by 0.75 of a metre. However, in regard to the overall size and scale of the existing buildings and, and also the extensions approved, officers don't feel that this would result in any, any significant um, substantial increase. And as such, we're recommending the application be approved, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We have two speakers. Um, first of all, Mr. Barnett, who's against the application. Mr. Barnett, you have three minutes, sir. Can you hear me? Mr. Barnett, you're muted. No, you're speaking, but you're muted. You've got to demute yourself. Okay, sorry. That's it. That's it. You've got three minutes from now. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gen gentlemen, on behalf of my wife and I living at number nine and Mrs. England living at number five, I would like to draw the committee's attention to the following points with respect to the application relating to seven Jubilee Close Long Buckby. Based on floor area, the redevelopment that is currently under construction and it was approved in 2019 is effectively two and a half times the size of the houses that were originally built in the close and is easily the largest redevelopment when compared to that of any of the surrounding properties. At the rear, the development extends five metres from the original building line for the full width of the house. The revised application for the two-storey part of the extension to be increased to three storeys to accommodate some dormer bedrooms requires the height of the roof from the ground to be raised a further 18%, such that it will be even higher than both the apex of the roof and chimney stack of the original building. The structure created will be approximately three times the size of that which was there when my wife and I bought our house 36 years ago. The owner of number seven acquired a piece of adjacent farmland to allow the movement of some large sewer pipes, the repositioning of which I understand was a requirement for the current development to proceed, and no doubt to replace a significant garden area lost by the increased size of the building. However, acquiring this land, on which I understand he is not currently permitted to build, there's nothing to mitigate the proximity to or impact that the development has on the entire, as the entire structure stands on the original plot. 
In terms of floor area, the revised design would be the equivalent of a building, of building another two houses of the original design on the same piece of land. The development as already approved will have a significant impact on the skyline in our corner of the close, reducing the privacy of Mrs. England's garden and blocking direct sunlight from our back garden for approximately four of the autumn winter months. An increase in height and size will, from our perspective, make the situation even worse. I would make a point here in relation to the statement that was made earlier that uh, we don't believe the roof has gone up by that such a small amount. Um, that may be in relation to the existing roof, but I don't believe it does in relation to the uh, roof of the two-storey extension. Um, one gets the impression that the planning system is structured in a way to ensure the success of the majority of applications by generally disregarding the not in my backyard attitude that many quite naturally adopt when someone tries to interfere with the environment in which they live and to which they have become accustomed. However, surely there comes a point at which after taking into account the need to temper a neighboring property owner's resistance to change, a reasonable person would consider that by permitting a particular development to proceed, the scales of justice have tipped too far in favor of the developer. We believe that further Three expansion, minutes, Chairman. and in particular, allowing okay. the three-story element of the revised- One sentence, Mr. Barnett, that's all. Right. One, uh, one result, more. Will result in property that's too, much too large and out of keeping with the other properties in the close, but perhaps more significantly, does, so does the parish council which was elected to objectively represent the opinion of the local community in these matters. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Barnett. Um, right, we have one more speaker. And um, pardon me, sir, if I pronounce your name wrong. Veloskus. I don't know whether that's correct or not, but I apologise if it's not correct. So the applicant. Um, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to express our view on this planning application. Upon uh, submission of this application, we received two objections from the local parish council, which I would like to address individually. Uh, objection number one says, due to the mass and size, this is an overdevelopment of the site. In my view, this, is, this isn't an overdevelopment of, because the footprint of the building remains the same, and the way the loft conversion has been designed will have an insignificant increase in height that is further diminished in regards to the house level, being the lowest in the street. You can see in photo number one that our house is, is the lowest in the street. Uh, our house is tucked away in a corner and the absence of a window on the front gable makes the third story level imperceptible. Also we'd like to bring to the attention of the committee that we acquired additional land like uh, um, Mr. Barnett says earlier, uh, 10 meter stretch alongside our south border about 500 square meters where we obtained planning permission for change of use that increased substantially the size of our garden thus accommodating the proposed extension, not making this an, an overdevelopment of the site. There are many examples in our street where planning permission has been granted to double story extension that are within a meter of the neighboring houses. In our case, three story extension is at the opposite side of the property, away from the closest neighbor, uh, Mr. Barnett, therefore not creating any obstruction to the right of light. I could present you with many photographic examples of overdevelopments in my view, uh, but understand that every planning application is being judged on its own merit, so I'll leave this judgment to be made by respectable committee. Objection number two, this proposed application is uh, out of keeping with the surrounding area and neighboring properties. <clears throat> In regards to the section, uh, second objection, I would like to present a couple of photos of the surrounding uh, properties that are similar to what we're trying to achieve. And photo number two, uh, at the beginning of Parfield Road, there have been built recently two three-story houses that are commanding over the street and are surrounded by bungalows. On photo three and four, around the corner on Murka Street, a main road, we have a similar three-story house that is in plain view and keeps with the surrounding area. In this example, planning application uh, uh, DA 2011 third floor conversion with dormer, planning admission has been granted in 2011. In this example, the difference is that our dormers are facing a field and are hidden from the view, when on Morcott Street, dormers are facing the main road. Uh, to build this extension, we sold all our properties that we had abroad and are planning to invest these funds in creating a beautiful and comfortable house that will meet our needs. By doing so, we want to live in harmony with our neighbors, which we agree to disagree on, uh, uh, on this proposal, uh, but we have very good uh, relation with our neighbors. By building this extension, 
uh, we're not aiming for financial gains, but to create a home for our family that is designed with the characteristic of local architecture in mind that will enhance the view of the street. Using this opportunity, we would like to thank the local community for having Three minutes, a chairman. Okay. I'll be quick. Uh, you can have one more sentence, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, when uh, in, in search of this uh, property, we needed a house that has potential, and this house had potential in the first place because I have a, um, uh, we have, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, we have a big uh, family. I've got four children, and as we've been blessed with another on, on its way. So, uh, and every time uh, we visit our family friends or our children go for a sleepover to their school friends, they are coming back sad and that they don't have their own bedroom I, like that. I think, yeah, okay. I, I, I think we get your point. I think your sentence is finished now, sir. Okay, with okay. respect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, again, two local members. Um, I will start. Um, yeah, it's big. Um, I refer, I, I, I don't like it, but I can't think of a planning reason to reject it. In fact, there isn't one. Um, I, if members look at the Long Butby Village design statement, and if you go to page 90, um, in fact, sorry, not 90, 96. Uh, L1, any development on the edge of the village should have a soft boundaries and secure hedgerows. And S2, develop, developments must be sympathetic to the general scale and design of their surroundings, unless there are exceptional reasons otherwise. I normally, I don't have any problem with anybody having this house as big as they want one. Um, but sometimes, if it's in a close, and this is in a close, and it is a lot bigger than the rest of it, as I said, I can't think of a planning reason to to refuse it that would stand up. But I, I, I certainly, I'm afraid, I can't vote for it. Uh, Councillor Longley. Yeah, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> well, my sentiments similar. I I, I know the. Um, Parish Council quite well. We've had lots of discussions on the library, things of that nature. And they're a very competent and um, intelligent bunch in my observation. So um, I'm going to support them in this case is that I think it, it, it on a different site, I think it, it would be um, a fantastic house and uh, um, really good. I just think that uh, I listened to what Mr. Barnett said um, and I can, I sympathize with him, sympathize with the Parish Council. So, um, uh, but again, I can't think of planning reasons. So, but I'm I'm not um, not going to vote for it on this occasion. Thank you, Tony. Speakers, uh, Councillor Ritchie, Chairman. Councillor Ritchie, Chair, I wasn't aware of having um, clicked my button. Uh, I raised a hand. I don't know where that came from. But if there's a uh, if there's anybody else who'd prefer to go first, because I've got to admit, um, I feel I feel in great difficulty over this. Um, we can't all abstain, although we might feel that's the direction we'd like to go in. Um, to me, I just feel uncomfortable about the thought that in a uh, in a close of houses. Of, of, of similar and modest size, you have at the end of it something that is so very, very different from the rest. Um, most people, if they need a bigger house, they, they move house to somewhere different rather than trying to enlarge where they are. Um, as a planning committee, we seem to spend a lot of time giving people permission to make their houses bigger. We're never faced with the job of trying to make houses smaller so that we make sure that the housing stock somehow reflects what the, um, you know, what the, what the demand for housing sizes are. I would be interested to hear from the officers if there is anything in the, anything from the housing survey that suggests that in Long Buckby uh, there is a particular shortage of houses of this scale. Um, Chairman, do you want to answer that? Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. It's not really a matter for consideration whether there's not any other houses within the vicinity which are up for sale or not. What members need to draw their attention to is what the application before them tonight is. 
And what I have to remind members is that majority of that proposal has already been approved. And the only thing for consideration is the increase in the eaves height and the ridge height by 0.75 metres in order to accommodate the rooms within the roof space. So, and so in terms of the remainder of the proposal, in terms of the rear extension, the location of the barbecue, um, in terms of the, the width of the extension, that's already been approved on a previous application. Thank you, John. Tony, speakers? Uh, yes, four more speakers, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Wesley, James, yeah. Yeah. Smith, yeah. and Irving Swift, Chairman. Okay, Councillor Wesley, then, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, planning's a difficult one, isn't it? You've, you know, these plans, they're always going to impinge on neighbours. It doesn't matter what you do. It's when you live close to people, that's the inevitable result. When I looked at this, I looked at this application, I think, uh, just consider that there's there's already an application there, so it is the height of it. The, the extension is at the furthest part of the house, uh, basically looking away, looking away from the close. Um, I think if it was already there, nobody would be, nobody would be moaning about it at all and not even thinking that it was an issue. Um, I'd like to propose that we go with officer's advice on this. I can't see I can't see any real reason. I can't see that it, I can't see how it overlooks anyone. I may be wrong on that, but I don't understand how the increased height causes increased overlooking when it actually uh, looks out the other way. Um, if I'm wrong on that, I'll like another member to tell me so. Um, but I propose that we go with officer's advice. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? I don't know. Um, I can see Councillor Irving Swift waving her hand. So I'll take you, Councillor Irving Swift. Do you wish to speak now? Because you're in fourth in order, so you can speak now if you want to. Yes, uh, we all uh, have opinion about the design, and I quite agree with the first speaker. That, uh, but uh, we need to be reminded of uh, what Chong said to us. Uh, the it has already a big house has already been approved, and there is a little bit, and uh, I think that we will have a great difficulty to go in that case against officer advice, despite the fact that like you and like many of them, I don't like particularly the design, but, um, and I hope for all the neighbors and the applicant that they don't fell out because it's nothing worse than to uh, not get on with your neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor James. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I agree with uh, what uh, Councillor Irving Swift and uh, Councillor Worsley have said. It would be very difficult to oppose these applications, and, and I would certainly have to go along with officers' advice, even though, you know, I don't care for that extension. And, and I say this as a surveyor, I certainly wouldn't put myself as a hostage to fortune uh, about a view over someone else's land. Uh, I think the applicant might wish to consider that, but that's nothing to do with this planning application. Um, anyway, uh, I will go along with officers' advice on this one. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair. Um, what I was going to be say has now been said, so I shall um, be quiet. Thank you, sir. <laughs> that's marvellous, Chairman. I, I call him Chairman for those that don't know. He's the Chairman of the Council at the moment. Um, right, any more speakers, Danny? Non indicated, Chairman. Right, we have a proposal that the application be approved, um, which has been seconded. So if you're for the application, you'll be for it being approved. Over to you, Marina. Councillor Chancellor. For. Councillor Cribbin. For. Councillor Dabbs. For. Councillor Frost. Against. Councillor Harris. I have to abstain. Councillor Irving Swift. Four. 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 She Councillor said James. four. Yeah. Four. Councillor Longley. Against. Councillor Parker. Four. Councillor Ritchie. Four. Councillor Robertson. Against. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Wesley. Four. And me this time. I'm against it. Okay.
result. Chairman, that was nine in favour, four against, and one abstention. Right, the application is approved. And that concludes tonight's business. Can I say, members, that um, tonight uh, has gone very, very smooth. And, and can I thank you all for uh, the part you played in making that go smooth, as well as officers as well. Um, that that was that was pretty that was pretty good. So, thanks very much. If we can do that, we can we can take on the world. It's only five past eight. <laughs> we yeah. can do some more, Tony. Go and get some more applications. Look, Chairman, I would like to see you in 